In this video, I'm trying out and reviewing the Blick Studio markers. I'll do a quick demo on how to draw this realistic portrait of my handsome husband, and I'll discuss the quality and performance of these markers compared to the similar but more expensive Copic markers. This video is sponsored by BetterHelp, more on that later. I have a small set of Copic grays. I actually made a video using these. You can check it out after this if you want, but unfortunately, the last time I tried to use them, I discovered that they had all dried up. <laughs> Now you can replace the ink and the nibs, but I've been eyeing these Blick markers and was curious if the quality was comparable to Copic markers. So I purchased the entire collection of Cool Grays, 10 markers in total. They're marked with percentages based on the value scale. For example, the lightest one is 10%, all the way up to 90%. And of course I bought the black marker for my darkest values. This is amazing because it gives you all of the shades you'll need to create realistic monochromatic artwork. Now when you buy more than six on Blick's website, the markers are $3.74 each. So times 10, that was $37.40. And you also get a free zip up marker case for storage, which is really handy. There are tons of colors. You can purchase sets of 6, 12, 24, 48, 96, or 144, or just pick and choose your colors separately. Prismacolor also offers a set of cool grays, and it's even cheaper than the Blick markers. It's $29.99 for the set. Let me know in the comments if you'd like me to review those. Blick markers are pro grade and fade resistant. Each marker contains 2.6 grams of permanent alcohol-based ink. They are dual brush and chisel tips, just like the Copic markers. The flexible brush tip allows for expressive lines, while the more firm chisel tip can create thick or thin lines, actually three different sizes. The ink and nibs are replaceable. Now Copic markers, on the other hand, are much more costly. It's $37.34 for a set of six sketching grays, which is about the same as I paid for 10, or if purchased a la carte, they're $5.80. 85 cents a piece and there's no discount for buying in bulk. Copic markers do have a larger color selection, but let's be honest, no one really needs hundreds of colors, especially when it's possible to layer these colors directly on the paper. In fact, even this selection of 10 gray values seemed like overkill. I probably only needed about six or seven and there were a few darks I didn't end up using much. So now that you've seen the markers, let's take a closer look at how to create realistic artwork using this unique medium. Now, if you're looking at my screen and saying, <clears throat> Emily, that's upside down, you would be correct. A great way to freehand sketch more accurately is to turn your reference image upside down. I know it seems counterintuitive, but this method, which was spelled out so eloquently in Betty Edwards' book, Drawing on the Right Side of the Brain, works wonders because it allows you to see more objectively. It forces you to view an object as a collection of abstract shapes and lines, rather than relying on your own preconceived notions of what a thing should look like. I use just a plain old mechanical pencil to sketch the contours of the head. My paper is Fabriano Artistico cotton hot pressed watercolor paper, size 5 by 7 inches, and my reference image has been printed in the same size just to make the sketching easier. Now some of you know that the model in this photo, my husband, his name is Blake, actually works with me in my art business. He built my entire website, he's been an essential part of my online school, he's the visionary, the big picture thinker, and he's an amazing problem solver, such a hard worker, and just the kind of person that really brings out the best in people. We are almost opposite personalities, and although we have some things in common, we do clash a lot because we tend to see things so differently. In fact, when we first started working on the business at home together, we agreed to go to therapy to work out some issues. It was so helpful having an objective, caring, outsider's viewpoint. Someone who could look at us both and say, hey, you guys are burned out, you need X, Y, Z. Maybe you're struggling with something right now too. The good news is that therapy has never been more accessible. I'm so happy to introduce the sponsor of today's video, BetterHelp. BetterHelp connects you with a licensed therapist who's trained to listen and give you helpful, unbiased advice. It's really easy to get started. All you have to do is go to their website and you can use my link, betterhelp.com slash art by Emily, where you'll answer a few questions and BetterHelp will match you with a professional who has had years of experience helping people with struggles just like yours. You can do it all from your phone or your computer, however you feel the most comfortable, and you'll be matched to a therapist usually within 48 hours so you can get started fast. It's totally worth it. Blake and I feel so much better equipped to work together thanks to our amazing therapist. Highly recommend. You don't need to struggle alone. Let BetterHelp connect you with a therapist who can support you all from the comfort of your own home. Visit betterhelp.com slash art by Emily, or you can choose my channel, Emily Olson Art, during sign up and enjoy a special discount on your first month. All right, with the sketch complete, let's start coloring. 
So you're going to see me work my way through these markers gradually, starting from the lightest to the darkest. The marker here is my 10% value marker, and I'm just using it to start blocking in anywhere that's going to be darker than the white of the paper, which is actually most of it. I then switch to my 20% just to test out a slightly darker value. I'm also using this to cover the entire hair and all of the slightly darker shadows in the face. Now my reference photo is just printed on printer paper. It's a little hard to see. I'll show you guys the actual reference photo, uh, a screenshot in just a little bit, but it's helpful to have your reference photo right next to you as you work so that you can make any corrections in real time and in the same size. Now I'm working with my 30% marker and starting to fill in the shadows inside of the ear. Also working on darkening the jawline, the hairline, outlining that top rim of the ear that's really catching the light, coloring in the entire head shape. Don't worry about the background until really the very end. You don't need to do your darkest darks until last. So we wanna really sneak our way up to our darkest values slowly and methodically, one step at a time. Here I'm darkening around the lips the 30% is really effective, I felt, for just getting all of those really light mid-tones everywhere you see subtle shadow transitions from light to dark. It's just kind of the perfect mid-tone for this particular reference photo. There's not a lot of really, really dark darks in this image. I also use it to quickly color in the neck, the shoulders, the ears. Now remember that you can always go back to your lighter markers again, and you can actually use those to do some blending, in fact, if you need to. So don't feel like it's a one and done kind of thing with each marker. You can come back to your lighter or darker markers as needed. This is my 40% value, beginning to darken under the nose along that jawline, which is where we have the strongest shadow shapes, and pulling that lightly up into the face. For the most part, I stick with that brush tip just because I love that flexible tip, the ability to go kind of sideways or use the thinner tip. You can do that with a chisel to some extent, but you're gonna get harder lines. And I feel with the brush tip, you get a lot more smooth, blended, softer lines. So for something like skin, which has really subtle transitions between light and dark, you want to be able to do your blending as smoothly as possible. You can see I used the 40% marker quite a lot and now I'm using the 50%. We're working our way darker gradually. When you're working on hair, make sure that you move your markers in the direction that the hair is growing. That's true of any kind of texture or hair. Just be really watching your reference photo for guidance on that. I'm using that to darken the chin and under that ear one more time. You'll see a lot of layers where we build these shadows slowly. It's really important not to go too dark too soon because once that marker's down, it is down, it's permanent. You're not gonna be able to remove it at all. Here's an example of switching back to one of my lighter markers, just to start blending some of that skin tone across the neck. You might realize too that leaving the white of the paper is just a little too light in some areas. So the 10 and 20% markers are gonna be super helpful for just going over those once again. Now I'm taking my 100%, this is my black marker and filling in the background. And if you're enjoying this video, please hit that like button and subscribe if you're not already subscribed. It really helps my channel out and allows me to continue bringing you great free content like this. Really go slow as you outline the facial features. It's so important, especially on a profile like this, to take your time and get those lines just right. Here I am using the chisel tip instead of the brush tip because I find I have more surface area. You can create broader marks with that large chisel tip. And now I'm switching back gradually to different lighter markers, filling in the facial features. Under the nose is one of those where you're going to almost blend it into the background. It's going to be quite dark. Same with that upper lip. And again, under the chin needs to go darker. It's really amazing. Once you add your darkest dark, in this case black, you can start to see where everything else really needs to go darker. Where it looked dark at first, now it's starting to look too light, just because we can finally accurately compare our values to that black background. So this is the fun part of just refining and polishing and adding little details. This is my 60% marker working pretty well for darkening under the chin again and adding another layer to the hair. I saved the hair for last. I felt like it was something I could do fairly quickly and I would also need my darkest markers for that. And you can see I didn't add a ton of detail to the shirt. I decided to leave that fairly loose and brush-like or painterly. It is pretty neat how you can get a painterly effect with markers. I found that these markers worked every bit as well as the Copic markers. They blend and they're really smooth. You can do endless layering with them. 
They do have a fairly strong alcohol ink smell to them. So if that's something that bothers you and you are particularly sensitive to smells, these might not be the best for you. Just something to take note of. Now we're going darker with the hair again and using more of the fine tip of the marker to create actual hair details. It's really interesting when you lay down the brush strokes with these markers, it, it's quite wet at first, but the alcohol dries really fast. So you can see in the sped up footage how it just kind of gets wet and then dries, and it does dry a little bit lighter. So that's a lot like watercolor, where it starts darker and then as it dries, it gets lighter. I noticed a couple of tiny drawing errors after I put down all these marker strokes. The neck, I think, was not quite sloped enough, and the earlobe isn't quite the right shape. But overall, for a freehand sketch that was done in about an hour, I was pretty happy with the results. I've used my final dark markers, my 90% and black, to finish out the details in the hair. I don't think I used my 70 or 80% value markers very much at all. I felt like I jumped pretty quickly from my lightest markers to my darkest without needing too many in between. So if you really want to save money, you probably don't need all 10 of these markers. I probably could have spent just a little more time on the hair, but overall it only took me about an hour to complete this portrait on a size five by seven inch paper and I was pretty happy with the result. There is the finished drawing. So why use markers, you might ask? Well. They're really fun to play with. Honestly, when I make marker art, I feel like a kid again, but these are so much better than your typical school grade markers. You know how when you layer cheap markers, it's impossible to make it look smooth. They just kind of create all kinds of lines over the top of each other. These markers glide and blend so easily. They're really dreamy to use. Another perk is that they're great for practicing monochromatic realism by gradually building up your values. Now, if you're a watercolor artist like me, the process of layering and going from light to dark with markers really feels quite natural. If you're part of a weekly sketching group, try taking these with you and draw a portrait or a figure from life. It's a fantastic, no pressure way to make art and just have fun. Thanks so much for joining me today. Let me know in the comments what you'd like to see in a future video. I love hearing your ideas and creating content that you want to watch. See you next time.